In our first two projects, we used Interface Builder for a lot of layout work. But here, our layout will be so simple, we can do the entire thing in code. You see, before we were adding buttons and images to our view. But in this project, the web view is going to take up all the space, so it might as well be the view controller's main view. So far, we've been using ViewDidLoad to configure our view once its layout has been loaded. This time, we need to override the actual loading of the view because we don't want that empty thing on the storyboard. Instead, we want our own code. It will still be placed inside the navigation controller, but the rest is up to us. iOS has two different ways of working with web views, but the one we'll be using for this project is called WK Web View. It's part of the WebKit framework rather than UIKit. But we can import it by going to viewcontroller.swift and adding this line of code next to Import UI Kit. Import WebKit. And that will bring in the WebKit framework as well as the UI Kit framework. When we create the web view, we need to store it as a property so we can reference it later on. So I add a property to view controller called var web view is a WK web view implicitly unwrapped. And now we'll add a method before view did load. We'll say load view. Inside there we'll write web view is a new WK web view. Web view dot navigation delegate equals self and then view equals web view. Now you'll see a warning there, big error, telling us that it cannot assign a value of type view controller to type WK navigation delegate question mark. And that's okay, we'll fix that in just a moment. Now I should say you don't have to put load view before view did load. You don't have to. You could in fact put it anywhere between class view controller and the closing brace. However, I do encourage you to structure your methods in an organized way. And because load view gets called before view did load, it makes sense to position the code above it as well. Anyway, there are several things we care about here because by now you should understand why we have to have this override keyword here and of course what func does and similar. So first, we create an instance of this WK web view class. We then assign that to our web view property, modify its navigation delegate, which I'll come to in a minute, and then make that the view for our view controller. Now this line here, assign navigation delegate, introduces a new concept called delegation. Delegation is what's called a programming pattern, a way of writing code. And it's used extensively in iOS, and for good reason too. It's easy to understand, easy to use, and extremely flexible. A delegate is one thing acting in place of another, effectively answering questions and responding to events on its behalf. In our example, we're using WK WebView, which is Apple's powerful, flexible, and efficient web renderer. But as smart as WK WebView is, it doesn't know or care how our application wants to behave, because that's our custom code. The delegation solution is brilliant. We can tell WK WebView that we want to be informed when something interesting happens. In our code, we're giving it this navigation delegate property, a value of self, which means when any web page navigation happens, please tell me the current view controller. When you do this, two things happen. First, you must conform to the required protocol. This is a fancy way of saying, if you're telling me you can handle being my delegate, here are the methods you need to implement. In the case of navigation delegate, all these methods are optional, meaning that we don't need to implement any methods. Any methods you do implement will now be given control over the WK WebView's behavior. Any you don't implement will use the default behavior of WK WebView. Before we go any further, it's time to fix the compilation error. When you set any delegate, you need to conform to the protocol that matches the delegate. Now, yes, like I said, all the navigation delegate protocol methods are optional, but Swift doesn't know that yet. All it knows is that we're promising we're a suitable delegate for the web view, and yet we haven't implemented the required protocol. The fix for this is simple, but I'm going to hijack it to introduce something else at the same time, because this is an opportune moment. First. Find this line here, line 12, where our view controller class 
extends UI view controller. Now modify it to this, comma, space, WK, navigation, delegate. That's the fix. Now, like I said, I want to use this to introduce something else, which is the concept of having one data type be multiple things. What we're saying here is that our view controller class is a UI view controller. It extends UI view controller, but that it conforms to the WK navigation delegate protocol. And you can have many possible protocols here. UI view controller, comma, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, and so forth. The very first one is the one it extends from when it's a class. When it's a struct, it can't extend from other structs, so it's always all protocols. But for classes, the first one is the one it extends from. This program is almost doing something useful. So before you run it, let's add three more lines. I'll scroll down to view did load, and in there, I'll say, let URL equals a URL with the string, HTTPS, colon slash slash www.hackingwithswift.com then force unwrap that then I'll say web view dot load a URL request with the URL being our URL and then web view dot allows back forward navigation gestures equals true so this first line here creates a new type called URL, which is Swift's way of storing the location of files. You probably already know that URLs are things online like hackingwithswift.com, apple.com, and similar, but they're just as important for storing local file names too. They are flexible little things. Now, even though we're used to using URLs as being strings of text, Swift stores URLs in a specific URL data type, like this, URL. This adds lots of extra functionality. So this first line of code creates a new URL out of the string HTTPS colon slash slash www.hackingwithswift.com. But of course, please change this to something else you like. However, make sure you do use HTTPS, otherwise iOS will not load data because of a thing called app transport security. It takes security very, very seriously. It will only load by default secure websites like that one or apple.com. Now you'll see I have forced unwrap this URL. This is not an accident. It's not a mistake. It's not bad practice. This is good practice. I have hand typed that URL to be an exact string of my uh, choosing. Uh, if you'd had in there a bad URL made from string interpolation, for example, with invalid characters, then the URL would fail to load and return nil. This is what's called a failable initializer. We saw those earlier. But I've hand typed it here. I know it's correct. This is safe to force unwrap. I'll see folks do guard let URL equals whatever, something I've typed else. Whoops, you've made a mistake, which just makes no sense. When you've hand typed your URLs with no string interpolation, it's generally best to force unwrap them like this. The second line here wraps our URL in a URL request. Now, this probably seems like pointless obfuscation from Apple, but WK Web Views don't load websites from strings like hackingwithstuff.com or even a URL made out of those strings. You have to turn that string into a URL, then put the URL into a URL request, and the Web View will load that. Fortunately, as you can see, it's not terribly hard to do. This third line, this enables a property on the Web View that allows users to swipe to the left or right edge to move backward or forward in their web browsing. This is a feature from the Safari browser that many users rely on, so it's nice to keep around. It's time to run the app, so go ahead and press Command-R or choose the Play button in Xcode. This will launch our application, and all being well, boom, we've got a web view rendering things right there on the home page. Looks really, really nice. I can probably tap on one of these things here. I'll choose a ProSwift great book. There's the page and hopefully I can tap here and drag interactively backwards and forwards using these gestures. Thanks to that in a property we enabled. There we go. Beautiful.